Hello everyone. This video is an introductory tutorial on how you can use TensorFlow JS. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Hey, but hold on. Before we start, it would be really motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos on data science and machine learning. Now, let's kick start the activity. In order to deploy your deep learning model in the browser, there are various ways of creating that model. One way is you can train your entire model in the browser itself, which is something that I'll cover in the next video. The other way is you can use Google Collab or your local system to first create your TensorFlow slash Keras model and then convert it to an equivalent TensorFlow JS model. So this video, we'll kickstart the activity by creating a deep learning model on Google Collab, transporting that equivalent model into a TensorFlow JS model and then using that in browser. So let's kickstart the activity by installing TensorFlow JS. So the way I would do that is by calling the function pip install TensorFlow JS. So let me run the cell. It is telling me to restart the runtime. So I'll do that as well. Now that I've restarted the runtime, let me go forward and import the necessary modules. I wanted to keep this tutorial on TensorFlow JS very simple. So the model that I'll be creating is the very famous XOR gate. The training data for XOR gate, if I consider two inputs would be 00, 01, 10 and 11. Correspondingly, my target data would be 0110. So let me import this in memory. Now the next thing that I do is I create an instance of the class sequential and I save it into a variable called as model. I add two layers to this model. The first layer that I add is basically a dense layer with four units and the activation is correspondingly tan h. So every neuron that I have that is four neurons in this layer will have an activation of tan h. The final layer is the output layer given it is a binary classification problem. My activation is set to sigmoid and I have just one layer or one neuron in that layer. So let me run this piece of code as well. Now that the overall model structure is ready, let me compile the model with respect to the loss value, the optimizer and the matrix. So let me run the cell. Now that all the background work is done, let me go forward and fit my training data along with the training labels and run this entire exercise for 500 epochs. So let me run this cell. Given this exercise is very simple, I'm pretty sure I would have reached 100% accuracy as well. So rather than going into the details of how the model is performing, I'll directly jump to convert this model into a corresponding TensorFlow JS model. Before I go on to do that, let me also show you the overall folder structure so that you're very well aware that I've not created a TensorFlow JS model beforehand. So let me show you this. As you can clearly see, there is just one folder, which is the default folder called as sample underscore data, which exists in the Google Collab session. So now is the time that I'll create the corresponding TensorFlow JS model. So the way I would do that is by calling the command tfjs dot converters dot save underscore keras underscore model i pass in the model that i've created and i also specify the folder name in which i want my tensorflow js model so currently i want the tensorflow js model to be created in a folder called as models so let me run the cell so as you can clearly see i was successful in the execution of the cell let's go to the directory structure and check if the model exists or not so as you can clearly see, I can see a folder called as models. When I click on the actual content of the models folder, I will see two files. One would be a JSON file called as model.json and the other would be group one slash shared one of one dot bin, which is nothing else but a binary file containing the weight values. So these are the files that you will require in order to deploy this on a web browser. If this idea is clear, Let's move on to the next activity. 
in the previous section of the video we just created a tensorflow js model from a keras model i tried out various techniques in terms of storing the model locally that is the two files that were generated and i tried loading it into the browser as well but i kind of encountered this error every time i tried different things as well which is the cors error or something called as the cross origin resource sharing error as a way to work around this error that i was getting what i have done is i have uploaded the two files that is the json file as well as the bin file in a github repository so let me show that repository to you as well so this is the repository that i was just mentioning what i have done is i have saved the bin file as well as the json file in this repository later on when i have to load the tensorflow js model into the browser this is the location that i'll be using now if this idea is clear let's jump onto the actual html slash javascript piece so if you recollect what we've covered so far is we've created a model in keras we've converted that to tensorflow js equivalent i've uploaded that model into github and now is the time that i'll make predictions by loading the model in the browser so let me go to the actual code implementation part i'll start off by talking about the simple html piece of code that i've written which is in the body section so let me unhide this piece of code so essentially what i've done is i have a heading here which is xor prediction part 1 i take in the input that is the first number from this piece of code i add two spaces using this piece of code i take in the second input from this piece of code i again add two spaces i now define a button called as make xor prediction and i also define a function called as make underscore prediction which will essentially call the javascript part of the code and this box that you see here is what is coded up here this box is where your final model prediction output would be displayed if the html piece of the code is clear let me go back to the javascript piece of the code now this essentially is the javascript piece of code that i've written i will start off the activity by explaining the load model function the first line of the code is where i define a variable called as model and i set it to undefined in the second line of the function what i essentially do is i pass in the url of the actual model that i just showed you into the function called as tf.loadlayersmodel once the loading process is complete once my model variable has actual weights of the tensorflow js model that is where i'll print out in the console window that the model has successfully loaded so this is the function definition part inside the script i also call the function execution or function call piece so as soon as the script executes we will be able to load the model directly from the github location the second function is where the button press happens so this is something that i call once you press the button which is make xor prediction here i have defined three variables called as a b and output a corresponds to the first value that you input that is the value that you load into this text box b is essentially the second value that you load here that is in this box which is just below enter the second number the third thing that i do is i define an input tensor called as input underscore xs wherein i define a two dimensional tensor structure and i pass in the values a and b here the third piece is where i make the prediction so i pass in this two dimensional tensor that i created into this function which is the predict function and i save this output into something called as output the output would again be in form of a tensor it is here that i have to index the tensor and catch hold of the final output that is what i have done with this piece of code so essentially first i convert my tensor into something that i can reference by calling the data sync function once i have the tensor in form of something that can be indexed which is the variable output data what i do is i want the output data to either be 0 or 1 
right now output data will contain probabilities so if the probability is greater than 0.5 that simply means that the output class is 1 if the output probability is less than 0.5 then it essentially means it belongs to class 0 so whatever output that I am getting be it 0 or 1 is what I feed into this small text box called as answer if the entire piece is now clear to you let us move forward and see the actual execution or running of this tensorflow.js model so let me expand the html piece now let me enter the first number which is 1 and the second number is 0 and let me press on make XOR prediction so just before I run this 1 XOR 0 is 1 so this is what I get here in form of an output if I change this to 0 I should get a 0 if I change this to 1 I should get a 1 and if I change this value which is the first number value to 1 I should get a 0 so as you can clearly see my simple XOR model is performing really accurately in this activity I was able to first create a Keras model for the XOR gate next up I was able to convert that Keras model into a corresponding tensorflow.js model and in the last part of the video I was successful in loading that tensorflow.js model in the browser so this was a small video that I had in mind in terms of showing you the capabilities of tensorflow.js I hope you enjoyed this video if you do like the content that I post on my channel it would be really motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos on data science and machine learning. Thank you so much for watching the video.